Hi guys, it's Magaz here connecting you to Airsoft. We all know the most important piece of equipment you need to play Airsoft is your eye protection. A lot of people don't take into account how important it is to also protect the rest of your face. After all, dental bills are costly and the novelty of whistling as you talk through the gap where your tooth used to live, like that old pedo from Family Guy, you shall not pass. wears off very, very quickly. To prevent having your nasher shot out, it is important to cover your face with something that will protect you from BB impacts. The first step that a lot of people take, myself included, is to go out and buy a paintball mask. I'm not gonna be covering these too deeply in this video, there are many routes you can take and a whole wide variety of options. The masks I have been using since the early 2000s are the JT Elite series. In particular, the JT Elite radar with a thermal lens installed. My mask has had the ear protection and some of the side of the faceplate removed. This was to allow it to fit flush with my old helmet. The pros of running a paintball mask are obvious. Everything is covered. You have solid eye protection and face pro solution all in one affordable package. The cons are also kind of obvious. It looks like a paintball mask. Unless you are cosplaying as a bad guy from a 90s low budget sci-fi movie, it's going to ruin the aesthetic of any military impression loadout or just generally not look cool. To remedy this, there are many solutions on the market. Some are better than others. Some are more aesthetic, but maybe not as practical, and some look more tactical than a paintball mask, but are still quite bulky and possibly immersion breaking for those super stitch counting cosplay lifers who want everything to be totes realistic AF. Let's jump into the Face Pro I've tried in the past in my attempt to move away from a paintball mask and towards something more tactical. We are going to start with my first mesh lower Face Pro and what could be marketed as a my first mesh lower face pro because it seems to be the one that the majority of newer players go for. The One Tigris six inch foldable half face mask. Priced at around $19.99, it is a reasonably cost effective choice, which for new players is ideal. This is pretty much what springs to mind for most people when you think of mesh lower face protection. It's basically your standard mesh lower. The front is made from woven wire mesh, as you would expect, but the sides are made from Cordura fabric and spacer mesh. This is thick enough to absorb the impact from a BB strike while remaining flexible enough to comfortably shoulder a rifle and maintain a reasonable cheek weld. The mask is held in place by adjustable elastic straps for those who want to wear it as a standalone item. For those wanting to attach it to a helmet, straps that attach to Velcro and the mounting point on the arc rails of modern helmets is also included. In terms of sizing, this mask is a one size fits most solution. Out of the box, I noticed the mesh isn't exactly symmetrical. The top is a little lopsided. It's not an issue in regards to how effective it is at protecting your face. The mesh itself is square weave mesh and is very stiff it can happily take BB strikes without deforming. This is a super simple and effective solution to the lower face pro issue. That is unless you have a horrendously broken nose. I can't wear this mask for too long because the mesh pushes against the bridge or the tip of my nose, depending on how I have it oriented. After as little as 15 minutes use, this becomes massively uncomfortable. The only ways I can remedy this are to either run the mask lower but this leaves a big gap between the bottom of my eye pro, leaving a large section of my face and nose open to taking hits from BBs. Alternatively, I could wear it really loose. This takes some of the pressure off my face, but after running around for a short while, I find it starts to slip down, and in some cases, has slipped off my face entirely. Or I could wear it on top of a neck gaiter or balaclava, which works to some extent, but does make goggle fogging a bigger threat. What is interesting about this kind of face pro solution is that it could still be classed as canon in the cosplay scenario. Generally, people who want to dress as a certain regiment or do an impression of a specific soldier from a photo from a battle or news report on some situation that's happening out there in meat space wouldn't agree that wearing a mesh mask as part of your loadout at an airsoft game is the way to go. But we are starting to see units such as the Met Police CTSFO up four units in training exercises and even 1337 SAS blocks 
running these kind of masks in a peculiar, oh, how the turns have tabled art mimicking real life sort of thing, where real world operators are wearing airsoft protection, probably for per-sec reasons while out doing cool guy shit in public. If the mesh option doesn't suit your needs, an alternative choice also from One Tigris is the T-Farge Comfort Mask. Coming in at around the same price as the foldable half base mask, the T-Farge is similar in design, but replaces the mesh section with a molded plastic mouth guard. The padded sides are also slightly larger in width, giving extra protection for the face. As with the previous mask, it comes with both standalone and helmet mounting options. I've tried this one primarily as a helmet mounted mask. In terms of comfort, it is miles above the mesh lower, even if it is worn very tight. The lower guard doesn't dig into your nose the same way as the mesh version does. If you had the option of picking this or the mesh, I recommend this one every time. The only downside I can see with this mesh mask is the length of it. It's far longer than my face and it's if it's worn properly, it sits about an inch and a half longer than my chin. Protection wise, this isn't an issue. What I find annoying is if I try to look down at my chest rig or a plate carrier, it prevents me from looking as far down as I would normally be able to do. The bottom of the mask will bump into either my body or the plate carrier and it will push itself up into my eye pro. I haven't had it nudge my eye pro or move them in any way, but it has started to slip over them. This means I can't see what I'm trying to look at and I have to take a moment to adjust it, which takes me out of the action and could possibly prevent me from doing what I was doing in the moment, like changing magazines or looking for a grenade, etc., which may lead to me getting shot. If you can live with the length, then this will be a great choice. If not, maybe take a look at the next option. Coming in at just under 30 pounds, the Delta Mic Mark II Face Protection Snood. Snood? Snood? It's a design you have no doubt seen on the field over the past couple of years. The Mark II is an interesting design. It takes a lightweight, breathable mesh fabric neck gaiter and incorporates a heavy gauge steel mesh mouth guard with thick padded edges. The snood is held in place by an elastic draw cord. This design is really popular and I can't argue that it isn't effective when worn properly. It definitely does its job, which is to stop your teeth from exploding. Where I can fault it, however, is nose coverage. The mesh is designed to cover your mouth. It leaves your entire nose exposed above it. The mesh is really flexible and can be bent into a shape that can sit on top of your nose and provide protection. But this means you have to either wear it at a weird angle that leaves the bottom of your face and mouth only protected by the fabric or pulled in really tight, which means the mesh starts to encroach on your eye pro. This mask is definitely for the player who doesn't mind being shot in the nose. I understood this when I bought the mask. My plan was to modify the goggles. I was planning on wearing it with to have a nose guard. I just couldn't find a comfortable way to wear this mask with those particular goggles in the end. So sadly, this one has ended up as a backup to a backup to the backup in the bottom of my bag. Don't get me wrong. It is a very innovative design and definitely does the job it sets out to do. It's just not for me. If you're looking for full face protection, this might not be the route to take. If you're just out to save on dental bills and want something comfortable and in a wide range of colors, this is without a doubt the best bet. The NB Tactical Neck Gator and Ghost Mask is a two-point solution to the face pro issue. Before we jump into this too deep, this is the most expensive option on the list and it comes in a variety of styles. The actual fabric part can either be bought as a neck gaiter, which is the route I went for around 20 pounds or a balaclava for the same price. These items are made from a stretchy fabric with ventilation for the mouth, nose and ear areas. On their own, they don't provide a lot of protection. This is where the ghost masks step in. Available as either the Fortis or Venom priced at 45 and 35 euros respectively, the ghost masks are mesh inserts that slide into the fabric component and sit snug against your face. The mesh is a heavy gauge diamond weave mesh with a rubber edging and two piece foam nose padding on the Fortis version. The difference between the Fortis and Venom is simple. The Fortis covers your nose, the Venom stops below it. 
I opted for the Fortis to provide full face coverage. The mesh is super lightweight and flexible and can be adjusted to fit most face shapes. The easiest way to put it on is to get the neck gaiter or balaclava comfortable first, then slide the mesh insert in from the top. Admin Airsoft runs one of these in a very unique way by using ear loops attached to the mask. He wears it like a reinforced surgical mask. I can't really point out any cons with this one, aside from it's a little more fiddly to set up than all the previous items on the list, and it costs a little bit more. In my opinion, this concept is almost perfect. I was really happy with it initially in my tests, just sitting around the house, but I, I couldn't get it to fit comfortably in the field with the goggles I wanted to run. I've since switched these out for a pair of block glasses with a gasket to make it full seal, so this issue is now not really valid. The Fortis would make the goggles ride a little bit higher than they should, which in my mind could possibly jeopardize the safety of my eyes or obstruct my field of view at best. With this in mind, I set about looking for alternative options and I found a solution that if I knew about before buying the Fortis or any of the other options, I would have bought this instead. This isn't to say that the Fortis isn't a fantastic piece of gear. It without a doubt is. I just couldn't get along with it with a particular set of goggles I wanted to run. On Amazon, I found this silicone mask insert for £10. Similar to the Fortis, it slides into any face masks and sits against your face. It's smaller in form factor than the Fortis and is super, super flexible. When it's in place, it covers everything I want to cover and it allows me to get a very solid cheek weld on my rifle. In my opinion, this super cost effective piece of kit paired with the MB Tactical Net Gator or any other net gator is the definitive way to protect your teeth and look operator as fuck. From a distance, it looks like all you're wearing is a net gator or balaclava. With it being silicone, it doesn't dig into your face like a mesh mask would. It has 69 holes in the front. Nice. Making it super breathable too. The cons, as far as I can see, are that it collects moisture when you breathe out and all that sweat that's under there. After every game, it is very soggy on the inside. And the fact that it's super flexible silicone means that it isn't gonna take all of the sting out of a BB strike like a mesh mask would. There is a chance it could still leave a mark on your face. Of course, that risk is greatly reduced. I wore this for about 10 minutes for a game at level two. I was hit at about 10 feet away in the face and it hurt a lot. I have also worn this setup in Woodland at Dagger and took shots to the face from range with absolutely no complaints. There we go, that's a not entirely definitive list of face pro options. Of course, this is all based on my opinion and use case. I have a stupidly broken nose that affects the way I can and can't wear some of the lower face masks. The best bet for you when looking at buying anything like this is to take multiple sources recommendations into account and make your decision based on extensive research. Take what I have said here as a starting point and take a look at other people's videos on this kind of content to expand your knowledge. Also, under no circumstances, try one of these. On a serious note, your safety and protection at an airsoft event is solely your responsibility. Only you can decide if the amount of protection you are wearing is adequate for the game. Whether that is raw dogging it with just shooting glasses and no lower face pro or throwing in a mouth guard or going the whole hog. It is down to you to decide. If you choose not to cover your face and you lose a tooth or end up with that awesome acne aesthetic, it's the choices that you made that got you there. Stay safe out in the field. And remember kids, the air may be soft, but our balls are hard. Check out these videos right here in this playlist for other kit and gear reviews and recommendations.